A car carrying a captain of the first rank of the Black Sea Fleet was blown up in the Crimean city of Sevastopol. Local telegram channels reported this. The incident occurred in the morning. It is believed that an improvised explosive device was activated in the car. The driver, a serviceman of the Russian army, died in the explosion, and the captain, 47-year-old Valery Kachenko, who was in the car, was killed. According to reports, both of his legs were amputated. Valery Kachenko is said to have previously been the chief of staff of the 41st Missile Ship and Boat Brigade of the Black Sea Fleet. Tkachenko was the person responsible for the missile strikes on Ukraine. North Korean fighters who have come to Russia to fight in Ukraine have been called mercenaries, cannon fodder and second-class citizens. But former North Korean soldiers and other military experts say many are willing to die because it is their chance to escape the grim conditions at home. As the Wall Street Journal writes, due to the specifics of their upbringing, they can demonstrate extremely high motivation in battle, even when fighting far from home and for an unfamiliar cause. According to former North Korean soldiers, almost all the fighters sent to Russia have a similar motivation. They are taught from an early age that they must sacrifice everything for the supreme leader without a moment's hesitation. The deployment of troops will be seen as the opportunity of a lifetime to bring money and glory to the Kim Jong-un regime. Those who die become heroes, those who survive return as heroes, the publication notes. As the Wall Street Journal writes, even the best North Korean troops lack modern equipment and resources. As David Maxwell, a retired US Army Special Forces Colonel says, many North Korean soldiers, even Special Forces, spend most of their time on farming or construction work. North Korean Special Forces training produces highly disciplined soldiers with high loyalty, often willing to take extreme risks with limited equipment. In the North Korean army, however, the special forces occupy a special place. They are better fed than other units and undergo more intensive training in infiltration, destruction of infrastructure and assassination. State television showed footage of soldiers training, smashing light bulbs with their bare hands or bending metal rods. The DPRK claimed that each special forces soldier was equivalent to 100 enemy soldiers. At the same time as former DPRK Special Forces soldier Lee Hyun Seung says, during training it was mandatory to attend daily ideological training classes where slogans about the readiness to die for the supreme leader were repeated. They may be sacrificed without achieving much in the war, but they will not dare to question the leader's order to go to Russia. Lee says, according to Bang Jong-Kwan, a former major general in the South Korean army, due to the language barrier and unfamiliarity with the terrain, the potential role of DPRK soldiers in Russia is limited to infantry. They will suffer heavy losses because it is unlikely that Russia will provide them with modern equipment or intelligence, Bang said. At the same time, former North Korean military officials say many soldiers will find the risk worth it because a foreign assignment raises their status in the country, giving them access to prestigious positions. It has recently become known that Pyongyang has sent several thousand of its troops to the Russian Federation. 
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky reported that there are already 11,000 North Korean troops in the Kursk region and they have already suffered losses. At the same time, according to military expert Alexander Kovalenko, Russia does not fully understand how to effectively use the DPRK military at the front. He noted that the key problem is the interaction between this contingent and the Russian forces. The enemy's record October losses, almost 42,000 soldiers or 1,350 on average per day, are explained exclusively by the increase in the number of Russian attacks in combination with the traditional tactics of meat assaults. And this is most likely not the last such record of the occupiers. This opinion was expressed today, November the 11th, on the air of the Freedom TV channel by military analyst Alexei Getman. They continue to carry out attacks regardless of the number of casualties. We call it meat assaults. The number of attacks has increased. The number of casualties has increased. The guest of the broadcast comments. Speaking about the structure of losses, he notes that such tactics of the Russians leave equally little chance of survival for both experienced soldiers and fresh reinforcements. Depending on which unit received the command to storm and what the relationships are between the soldiers, servicemen and mid-level commanders. We have heard such news that sometimes they send almost specifically to the slaughter. When professional soldiers attack, already with combat experience, they are better oriented, can move more correctly, cover themselves more correctly. This also does not significantly affect such tactics. If there were another, more, let's say, modern tactics of conducting military operations, then their advance would be more significant and the losses would be less. But they are unlikely to change anything, the military analyst believes. He recalled the battles for the city of Bakhmut in the Donetsk region when, for every 48 centimeters of advance, there was one dead or wounded Russian and stated that the enemy is literally paving his path with its own corpses. And now the Russians are trying to seize as much Ukrainian territory as possible in anticipation of a possible freeze on the front line. Therefore, Getman predicts that the Russian army will break its October loss record. The weather conditions are already a little more difficult for the Russians, and they have exhausted what they prepared for this offensive operation, which began in April to May of this year. Therefore, I think they will strengthen quantitatively. This is not very good for us. We also suffer losses, and it is not so easy to repel these massive attacks. The guest of the broadcast added, Alexei Getman also noted that the losses, no matter how record-breaking they were, and no matter how shocking they were to the civilized world, remain acceptable for the Russian Federation.